Hi guys, so right now we're at Dunlechny Parish Churchyard and uh, the burial ground around the churches contains many interesting gravestones. There is also a private grave for the Bagnalls, Newtons and Vessies of Dunlechny Manor. This area is known as the Newton Plot and was originally outside the boundary of the main graveyard and it became part of the main graveyard when the graveyard was extended along the south and west boundaries in 1846 approximately. And the whole area is enclosed by yew trees. Um, it's also said that uh, in the wooded area adjacent to the graveyard is a large mound and there are reasons to believe that this was the site of a Norman moat garrison of knights with squires and servants and was loca located here in the late 12th to early 13th century so quite a lot going on in here now i'm not sure that we'll get in the gate we might have to oh no we can i think no we're going to have to actually get over these little styles that we keep seeing Yeah, so look at that. Already we can see hundreds upon hundreds of headstones. So I might actually take the path up along. There's actually, this is a, a memorial here. It was erected in 2010. For all those that are buried here, um, some in graves that are not marked. So we're just going to just look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I've actually never been around this area at all. So this is all very new to me as well. Yeah. Have a look. And I believe this is Bagno that we just discussed. 67 years old when he died. Um, I don't actually see a date. It says the year of our Lord, all right. May in the year of our Lord. Age 67. But I might be able to see that a bit better in edit. But I'm sure that says Bagno. And it's kind of all broken away, but you can see it's in its own private little walled area. So... Quite interesting, really. I'm actually going to wander along here. Here is another kind of a plaque. I can see 1766 already. Lord of mercy on the soul of Nicholas Murphy, who departed this life. Uh, the 2nd of February. 1766, age 64, also Mrs. Elizabeth Murphy. Haley Sexton, she died in 1771, age 75. The body of James is there as well, 1778, aged 45. We have a hole here in the wall. I'm sure we can get around in there. Just look at this. It just seems to go on and on and on. So we've quite a number of headstones along this way. In fact, the whole area is surrounded by these headstones and uh, with markers as well. But this is where we were looking through that little hole in the wall there, I think. at 
this. Erected by Charles J. McGrath in affectionate remembrance of his beloved parents, may the Lord have mercy on their souls. Maybe there is writing on this side, and there is. John McGrath of Bagnall's Town, who departed, sorry, who died December the 21st, 1876, age 75, and also his wife, Ellen. And she died in 1851, age 39 only. So a huge monument. So there's no way we can read out all of these. But, um, Look at these, aren't they beautiful? And two of them are exactly the same. These are also McGrath, 1887 there. Charles J. McGrath, age 39, I think. And Jane, wife of Charles, so she's beside her husband, 1916. So beautiful headstones there. Here lies the remains of John Joseph Tierney Esquire and simply says solicitor there. I don't see any dates or anything else. So this is actually really, really beautiful. We have another plaque here on the wall. 1759. Here lies the body of James Byrne who died the 30th of July 1759. Age 78. Lord have mercy on him. Amen. Also Mary Byrne. Nice designs on that one as well. And look at in this little area in here. And I can see actually these have been numbered. Look at the size of these. We have a 1742. Right there. Here lieth the body of, I presume that's James Blackney who departed this life the 21st of May. And you can see that this is actually wrote in letters rather than numbers. He was 60 when he died in 1742, also the body of Mary Blackney, uh, wife of Walter, 1754 there, age 32, and the body of Katrina, wife of James. She was 72 when she died. And other, all the other writing seems to have too hard to read. These are all Blackneys. There's Blackney as well. Walter Blackney, 1775. There's also an 1842 there. There's an 1819 as well. That looks like 18 years to me. There's a James Blackney. That looks like 1857 aged 75. And just look at the what was, I presume, a window. The roots. Wow. So those are the numbers there, those white numbers. 1798, age 63. Reverend Michael. Gaff or Pendergrast, maybe. Parish priest, 1810. His uncle, Michael. 1798, age 63, memory of his grand uncle as well. They were all reverends. Uh, Malachy Brophy, doctor of Sorbonne, it looks like, and PP of Dunleckney, who died 2nd, I think it is, of October, 1758, age 63. And just down here at my feet, I've noticed. And look at this writing. Here lie at the body of Margaret Brown, who departed. Um, it actually says who deceased the 17th of June um, 1717 guys just there and in something something year of her age looks like that could be her age just in there and that looks like 21 may she rest in peace amen so that writing, obviously, somebody has come along and um, repaired it somewhat. But we go back out along. So 
this place as I said is absolutely huge but it is really really beautiful and unfortunately we just don't have the time to name them all and you can see just how large the area is we have a little iron heart here look at that iron yeah nothing on that one there's more little iron an iron cross this one now that looks like 1622 one six two two wow oh my god here lies the body of that looks like brine maybe and the name is probably there i'm actually afraid to remove anything off it because as you can see it is actually coming away but 1622 guys that is amazing we have a beautiful cross down there so i'm actually going to go down towards that next 1927 margaret lines look at that for detail and this is also iron as well another iron one beside it with this one that's sinking down daniel we won't be able to read a date on that one and it is actually quite hard to walk around we have a 1798 i think here looks like Pat Kehoe 1798 this looks like 1784 on this one erected by Thomas Byrne memory of his mother and also four of his children wow And we have this new one. Well, I'd say the headstone was erected because it says 1942, Martin. He was 37 when he died and his wife, Catherine, she was 53 when she died in 1964. And also their daughter, Mary Bridget, who died in infancy. So look at this cross. This is the one that I was, was looking at. We have several crosses actually here, all in a row. But look at this. Those are angels. I wonder if I get around, can I read it at all? It actually looks like it's in maybe Irish actually. But really beautiful. Seventeen seventy three on this one. Um, Lord of Mercy on the soul of Dennis Byrne. Seventeen eighty. He died in seventy eight. Age ninety three. So great age. And then we have his wife, Maud. She died seventeen seventy three. Aged eighty four. So both of them, great ages. A simple one with a, a cross etched into it. Now it did say that um, some of the markers actually came from the church itself. So they would have used, um, I suppose, remaining stones from the church as markers. Look at that. And unfortunately, no writing with this here as well with a huge hole in it so I don't know what that would have been for you see all the markers there lined up along the the back
This looks like John and his wife is there. But unfortunately, I just can't make out the dates. I'm sure a lot of these um, graves won't be read. But I want to bring you along, up along here, this place. It just gets better and better. Look at this. I'm actually here. Those were church bells. I hope the phone picked it up. Look at this. Now when I get down, I want to show you. Wow. We have headstones even in there. We have scallons. These are scallons here. So we have 1888. The one at the back there is Edwin Scallon or Scanlon 1923. That's actually a really beautiful headstone. And we have more than more Scanlons along here. We have 1888. Now this one here is actually interesting. I'll just zoom in. James Scanlon Boher Moore died the 13th of April 1924, age 75. Also his eldest son, Fred. Killed in action in France, the 22nd of November 1917. And Sophia, beloved wife of the above James Scanlon. She was 68 when she passed in 1934. So Fred was killed in action in France. Hope you can see that there. Wow. So as I said, this is obviously all Scanlans. So we're right in woods. Another beautiful one there. This is Murray. An affectionate remembrance of William Murray, 1896. Elizabeth Murray. 1882 and their children, John Murray, who died in infancy, William Anthony Murray, he was 31 when he died, Thomas Murray, he was 48 when he died in 1897, Georgina Emily Murray, she was only 14 when she passed in 1873. So we have a gate there, but it doesn't lead to anywhere. Dolores O'Connor in loving memory, my sister, Mary Williams, 1910 to 1922, also my father. John Williams, 1869 to 1940, also my mother, Catherine Williams, Neo O'Hara. And my brother, John, who died in infancy. So a little tiny headstone tucked away in this beautiful graveyard. Now guys, this is something else. Look at those crosses. These are the family. The family name is Hoare. We have Walter Hoare, 1902, age 47. And in loving memory of Walter Hoare as well. Possibly father and son. And you might be able to see that there. I can't actually quite make out the writing on that one. But just look at all those crosses. Beautiful. And we've more crosses here and yet another gate. Lovely cross there as well. 1932. Now, look at that. Wow. Until the day break and the shadows flee away. And then there's, I think that's just something off a verse. But look at that. That is marble. It's a... Uh, 
quite spooky where it's situated and it's um like those mart safes that we've talked about let's have a look on the other side we have more writing here and loving membranes i'm just going to try and get around with the briars and stuff loving remembrance of philip Jocelyn Newtown, who died April 1895. Isn't that gorgeous? And you can see that the cross there um, is actually marble, I would think. Yep, marble. Absolutely beautiful. And it's just here amongst all of this. This is Newton as well. It's obviously some sort of um, family plot. Philip Jocelyn Newton, 1842, and died 1888, I believe. As I said, this is all very new to me. I haven't been in here before, so you're actually coming along with me as we discover all of this. We have little silver bells on this one, little tiny, tiny headstone. Loving memory of Dudlin D U D L E I C H Dudley John Bagnell, infant son of Philip H and H J Bagnell, or oh, five months, and the little child shall lead them. Ah. Oh. That's very, very sad. So a tiny, tiny baby, buried here, but in a, a really, really beautiful resting spot. But this place just goes on and on and on. We have a lovely one down here as well. And this is actually quite strange. We've actually two of them. One here. And one here, and both of them have headstones at the top and at the bottom. In memory of Charles Stanley Osborne, Baronet of Beechwood Park, County Tipperary, 1879, aged 54. And at the foot of it, it says, The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. So I've actually never seen a plot like that where you have a headstone at the top. And kind of one at the bottom as well, but we've two of these. Guys, look at the colours. Oh, wow. This is just something out of uh, a film set. This is also Osborne, Sir William Osborne, Baronet of Beechwood Park in the County Tipperary, who died July 1875, and of Maria, his wife, who died October in the same year. Wow. And the same thing, we have um, this one at the bottom of the plot. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my fate. Wow. Just look at that, guys. Look at that tree. This place is unreal. This is John Kidd and Annie Kidd, 1876 and 1893. This is Ellie Duffield, 1892 and Charles William Duffield, 1894 and loving, the loving children of Charles, um, 1903 aged 77. So I think there would have been something on the top of that there. Isabella Bruce, daughter of Alexander Johnston. Berkwitcher. Todd Pig. Todd Pig. Berwickshire. And wife of James Stewart. Died 1888, aged 62. Also James Stewart. 1894. So I don't know whether I've pronounced that right. We have another 
two headstones in there. Just look at it. It just goes on up along this big hill and look at that cross. And you can see the beautiful berries now are out and our feathered friends won't be long about eating those up. So I don't think I've ever seen anything like this place. We were in an enchanted forest not that long ago and um, this is similar in the sense that we have headstones in under trees. And look at all those in there. And this looks like the family miller. I won't be able to get in that far to read, I don't think. I might try and go around and get in. There's a 1978 Nancy, daughter of John and Mary Jordan there. But I'm going to go up and around and see if I can get under those trees to read. Oh, look at that. Lovely lily on that one. Richard Lewis. And the date is covered in moss. There's an iron cross here. More headstones. And these ones are numbered as well. I'm going to go between these headstones. A loving memory of Henrietta Bolton. 1897-33. But just look at where we are. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to try and get down towards those headstones. We have another beautiful one here, an affectionate memory of Edward Jones Porteous, 1888, age 25 also, of Mitchelson Porteous, age 29, he died in 1894, Mary Ann Porteous, mother of the above named 1909 aged 84 and there's a John Murray there as well everywhere I turn there is more headstones Christopher Riley the faithful and attached servant to Philip J Newton Esquire and the family for more than 50 years who died the 9th of March 1879, age 75. Wow. And beside Christopher, in loving memory of Christopher, eldest and beloved son of Robert and Marianne Bradley, who died June 1911, age 50, also their daughter Elizabeth. She was 26 when she died in 1889, their son William. He was 44 when he died in 1916, and the above Robert Bradley. He was 83 when he died in 1920 and then his wife Marianne was, I think that's 81, in 1919. But this place is stunning. I know I keep saying it but just the colours and the trees. It's quite amazing the size of that tree. Oh it's huge. Wow, where to next on this one? Wow, oh, I could stay here for hours just in this area alone. Um, the beautiful colours, the trees, such a fantastic little spot. Um, where to go? Right, I think we'll head this way. As I said, I've never been here. Um, I've seen a couple of photos online. Nothing much. I just have to be careful about where I walk now. Uh, all these markers, look at them all. These people are all remembered. 
grass is oh really really wet we've had an awful few days of weather beautiful cross down there I just don't know where to go kind of up the, the top up here now what have we got in here looks like a, a weave of the bells Wow, I don't know whether it'll pick that up. What have we got in here? We have little plaques here. Annie Sheenan, 1884 to 1937. Dick Sheenan, 1882 to 1958. Their daughter, Catherine, 1910, aged just five months. With Pauline Monaghan beside that one. And a little plaque down here with a baby for John Richard Walsh. That says 1945 to 1946. So there's something up here. That's a tomb, but it's also up on a a wall. And I don't think I get up to it. Oh, oh no. Wow, such a a strange place. It's right up against the wall. burial ground belongs to John Joseph Murphy now have we got a date 77 1868 age 77 wow and he is overlooking all of the the graveyard so nice Place to be at rest. With more rails, a railed plot here, and there is a headstone. It's completely covered in ivy, and I'd imagine there's possibly a tomb there as well. There's another big monument down here, this cross. Just look at that. Completely covered. Actually, now that I see this cross, erected by Thomas Byrne in loving memory of his wife, Margaret. 1884, age 75. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, I don't think I'll be able to get much nearer than this. Oh, this looks lovely. There's some sort of design around the bottom of it. It's kind of built up on a hill. Oh, look at that, the way that the leaves have grown and died on the rails. I might just zoom in a little bit to see that. But I can't. It looks like Isabel actually on it. But there's no way of reading that there, unfortunately. Look at the size of it. Now, we have another tomb there and what looks like a cross. 
completely covered as well in moss. It's actually hard to um, find your bearings here because there's so many twists and turns to this little place, or this huge place actually, because it is huge. But I'm kind of just stopping at the ones that are catching my eyes. Now these are new, new railings here. What's this? Oh, let me fix that. This is Thomas Monaghan, 1957, aged 59. And his granddaughter, Elizabeth, interred in England. And also Patrick interred in England. Wow. Very hard to read that one. When you see those little tiny headstones, you always think it's possibly going to be a child. Look at the tombs here. Wow, look at this one at the back. Kind of like a, a gothic style. I can just see children here. The loved children. Two little, oh. Let me see. Where rest in the sleep of death, the bodies of two little sisters, Katie and Lizzie, the beloved children of Thomas and Anne. Aylward, and then there's writing there. That is very sad. Two little sisters. Oh, now this tomb. Look at the size of it, and uh, just an interesting top for it. I don't think I've seen one like this before either. They're usually just the the flat tops on them, but this one actually has a nice design on it but um, no way of reading anything on it unfortunately so as I said there's loads of markers along here and this just brings us back around to the church this one has caught my eye Erected by Richard Smith in memory of his daughter, Sarah, who died 7th of June, 1810, and she was just five. Oh, so another little, a little girl this time. And uh, yeah, you could easily spend hours in here looking at them all and reading them all. We're kind of back in or around where we began. I mean, there's I'm kind of hitting the wind now again. That's the the bagnels in there. Oh, wow. How oh, do we go in on safe building and underfoot conditions? Yeah, we're still going in, guys. Oh, my God. Okay, so we're not going to get too far in. Oh, I see a plaque. Beloved wife, Philip Jocelyn Newton, who died at Dunlechney, 1849, age 53. So there's a plaque on the uh, wall. There's actually one just in further. Oh, we have to try and get in, guys. <clears throat> so I'm trying not to uh, cut this video too much, just to bring you along as best I can. Now there is a massive hole there, so we are going to have to be very, very careful. A lot of stones on the foot. I don't see much more than this plaque and it's possibly far too dangerous now to stage to go in any further this is newton as well walter newton august he was 63 when he died and he died in 18 1853 wow my 
gut tells me that there is possibly more in here but uh I don't really want to chance it. That looks like that hole kind of runs all the way down along there. And you can just see the end window and the little arch windows just there as well. So really, really nice, but uh, dangerous. So as much as I'd love to go in and explore a bit more, we do have, um, and I do see another plaque down there, but it's just too, too dangerous to get down. Um, yeah, I do have a limit to where I will, whoops, where I will go. And there was a sign, even though the gate is actually open. There, oh, there was a sign saying it is dangerous building and dangerous underfoot. Oops. So if I zoom in, actually, I wonder, can I pick it up? Yeah. Down. Where is it? Sorry. <laughs> Down there. That's another plaque. But yeah, I'm not going to chance going in any further. There's the, the gate and the doorway in. Look at that. Now, and we're out. Another beautiful cross there, and lots and lots of markers. And just look at that. Quite an amazing place. I'm covered in uh, sticky mollies. These, these ones have been erected um, not that off long ago. We've actually this uh, style again, which as I said, I've never seen before, but now we've happened on three. Um, Dowling, this is 1957. Joan and Margaret, daughters of Thomas and Nessie Dowling. Can't read that side. <clears throat> but I think we've covered quite a lot today. And uh, as I said, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, you'd easily spend a few days in here, I'd say, if you were to go around and record them all or read them all. Another one in a little hedged area and a, one then on the ground there as well. But uh, I have to hit the road. We have planned one more stop on our trips, our trip around um, Carlo. So for now, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you soon.